What's good guys, Mike Thomas, aka The Young Trisha here, and today I want to bring you the long-awaited update to my Dragon Link deck profile. As you might have seen, I posted a Dragon Link deck a little while ago, and the very next day they dropped a ban list, making the entire deck list invalid. So, as always, Konami stays hating on our Dragon Link strategy, but it is okay because I have enlisted the help of my very good friend and teammate, Darren Dial, who almost won a remote duel YCS with Dragon Link a little ways back. We wanted to make sure that this list was one of the best that we could provide you for the current format. So without any further ado, let's hop into the deck profile. Okay, so this deck is pretty straightforward. To start things off, we play our five card rocket engine. We play two tracer, one recharger, one synchron, one abso router. Two tracer can be seen as a little bit heinous sometimes since we are so used to as Dragon Link players always wanting to open the rocket tracer however we did want to cut it to two to make space so we're only playing two of it and we are playing the rocket synchron even though we are not playing hot red in this list which we'll talk about later now rocket synchron does come up in this deck quite a bit we were testing it uh, without the Rocket Synchron in the list. And we found through our testing that Rocket Synchron just came up a little bit too often, especially when going for plays going second with Halky Fibrax, that, or whenever you start with the Red Rose package, that we just wanted to see this card in our deck and have it as an option for us. So that is why we chose to include it. We chose also to include it instead of Rocket Caliber, because while Rocket Caliber can summon itself from hand, it cannot be summoned off of Halky Fibrax from the deck. Now for the first non-Rocket Dragon, we played Destrudo. Destrudo playing a very important role in this deck since this deck is very centric around the adventure package. Uh, we wanted to include Destrudo since we're already playing the one copy of Foolish Burial as, as another way to see our Water Enchantress. We wanted to have the Destrudo as an option for when we already had access to the adventure package and we already had access to our Tracer package. So we wanted to just have a nice card that we can Foolish and use it in order to summon Halk or go for a shooting riser dragon at some point during the turn and it's just very nice to have this in our deck just as a free extender to make Halk with since Halk is very important for this deck. Then we played as always the two baby the two babies the white and the black collapse serpents along with our three chaos spaces to search them. We played the one red rose, one rocks rose and one basil shoot package. Even though you do not have the three red rose anymore as a good normal summon the cards are still very important in the deck and still part of a, one of the big reasons i think dragon link is still viable right now because they give you so much material to use to link climb into your boral and dragon which is obviously the card keeping this deck alive right now so i think these cards are mandatory along with the adventure package i think you do have to play them for playing Dragon Link competitively in this format, since it can be kind of difficult sometimes to make Borland without playing these cards. Now, I'm gonna skip over these cards just really quickly to just mention that we do have the adventure package in here. We do play the standard one Griffin, three Water Enchantress, three Rite of Armies, and the Foolish. We did not play a Legal Knight in this version of the deck list we do have other variants of this list that were playing illegal knight but we decided to take the illegal knight out of the deck because it was not coming up enough for us and we did not want to play another non-engine monster that really only play that really only did anything for us when we were going second and when we were already playing the game so we just decided to cut it and we haven't missed it yet but it might make its way back into the list uh, with more testing though i don't think it's necessary now going back to the non-engine monsters we just skipped over we're going to talk about fairy tale snow fairy tale snow obviously is a very strong card just in general in this format i've said it before but i think if you're not playing fairy tale snow in this format i think something's going wrong with your deck because i think this card is so so powerful and then we did want to continue to play uh, magician souls in this deck i believe in my previous list i was playing two magician souls to illusion of chaos we slimmed that package down to one and one just to keep it at a clean 45 in our deck these cards are potentially cuttable though they are really nice to have uh, especially when you do see that adventure package and because your deck does play field spells something that comes up quite a lot in dragon link combos is that you'll go for a romulus and then you'll go dragon ravine send an abso router 
and then get a rocket tracer and then you just send that dragon ravine to the graveyard to play boot sector so we really like having the magician souls to just get that ravine off the field and draw a card so we're not playing inefficiently removing our field spell for no reason now for the rest of the monsters we played hand traps we played three ash three droll three nib three gamma plus the driver um not too much to talk about with these hand traps ash is obviously the hand trap that sees play in every format in every deck uh nibiru obviously a really strong card especially with how much sword soul is in the metagame and how many combo decks exist outside of despia uh, Droll is really good, I think, just in general right now as a main deck hand trap, because every deck in this format draws and searches a whole ton. Despia can be a really hard matchup, so if you Droll them in the right place, it can just end their turn, which is always nice. But even with Sword Soul, which can also be sometimes a rough matchup, Droll is actually really nice into that matchup, because if your opponent, say, starts with a Moe, and summons a token and then activates vessel they are going to add a card before they go into their chi chow and get their draw and you just troll them you shut that off and now their chi chow gets no gets no surge their moe gets no draw and you've potentially messed up their whole turn this is also really punishing if the opponent starts with pot of desires which is really common so drone lockbird is just very very nice because it really punishes your opponent for playing their turn kind of in the optimal sort of way. Finally, the last one to talk about is Cyframe Gear Gamma. It's kind of a replacement for Effect Veiler being the effect negation hand trap of the deck. However, it's also extremely good in Dragon Link because all of your best starters are spell cards and cards that are activating before you have anything on the field. So if you just guarantee that those cards go through, then you pretty much have already won the duel. Gamma is also really nice in the deck because it allows you to set up that chaotic magical dragon. And if you get to that card, you've probably already won the game. Leading on from that, uh, we have the chaos space, obviously one of the best cards in the deck card that you want to defend. Uh, only thing really interesting to note about Chaos Space in this deck is that it can search Illusion of Chaos. And we have the three quick launch, obviously three more copies of Tracer and all of our rockets. Very good starter. It's effectively just emergency teleport in the Dragon Link deck. I'm going to skip over the adventure package because we already talked about it as well as the Basil Rose since we talked about it. We play the Foolish Burial. We've talked about this. It can send your Abso Router, your Distrudo, and your Water Enchantress, so it's really nice. Sometimes you send Snow with it. And then you play your two field spells, which are mandatory. As for the extra deck, everything's pretty much standard except for one or two cards in the extra deck that I'll talk about. So you play your one Striker, your one Pisty, your one Seals, your one Romulus, your one Halky Fibrax, which is the most important card in the deck. Uh, you're usually choosing to start on this now rather than uh, uh, start on your striker dragon so if you do have to start striker dragon you're probably already in a bad spot uh, we play the one quad boral quad boral doesn't come up too often anymore since you're not you're not making your seals first in this list as often so it doesn't come up too too much though it is nice when you go second and it can be really nice as a way to set up your pisty so it does stay in the deck mostly for its arrows we play the ip mask arena unicorn access code Obviously IP is a nice disruption, but this card on its own allows you to play through set Fallen of Albaz. One of the very common memes in this format against Dragon Link is, oh, what are you gonna do against set Albaz? That's not really scary for this deck since you are usually ending on an IP Mask Arena, and if you're playing against Branded Despia and they set a monster against you, you can just use your IP Mask Arena to go into Unicorn and shuffle that monster back and now they are unable to contact future board. So very nice package. Uh, and then of course the Borland, the new heart and soul of the deck. Uh, this card is so strong, like it, it has like five effects on it and they all have ridiculous, uh, they all have ridiculous conditions to it where it can't be destroyed by Valor card effects. It can't be targeted with monster effects. Your opponent can't respond to its negation effect. Its negation effect is also a monster reborn. This card is just crazy. I, I don't know what R&D was thinking printing this card. Only thing interesting to mention about Borland in Dragon Link in general, and this is just a general tip, is that something that's really fun that you can do with this deck, in, especially in a tournament setting, is you can end on your Borland Dragon. And the best card to reborn with Borland is your Rocket Recharger because since Borland cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects, 
it's very safe on the board. Rocket Recharger cannot be targeted for an attack if you control a dark monster summoned from your extra deck. So this kind of creates a Marauding Captain lock where you're just sitting on Rocket Recharger in defense plus a massive Borland Dragon that they can't destroy. So it's just a very funny lock to put your opponent under. Uh, I've done this to people a few times and they're always blown away at this. They waste their battle phase or something. And it's just really funny. It's just really funny. Now, moving on to the Synchros, you obviously play the standard. You play your Chaotic Magical and your Borlode Savage Dragon. These two are the level 8 Synchro monsters that make this deck good. Uh, we are not playing Hot Red in this current list. Uh, we are playing Barone de Fleur, though, because you usually go into Barone to trigger your Red Roses. Uh, we also play the Shooting Riser Dragon, since Shooting Riser Dragon will dump you the snow. Now, for this last slot, this is the spot that I want to talk about. So all these 14 cards that I've mentioned before, these are all more or less mandatory. You have to play them. There's not really much reason to cut these cards. However, the 15th slot is very flexible and there are about four cards that you can play. Currently we're playing in this 15th slot, Dark, Dark the Dark Charmer Gloomy because it helps you set up lethals going second and it's very nice. I think there's just so many applications for this card in this format that it's hard to overlook it, as well as it being a Link 2 monster that has proper arrows for you, so sometimes you can use this in the mid game or in the mirror match to set up a play with Pisty, which is always really nice. However, however, the other cards that you can play in this slot are cards like the Hot Red that we did cut if you are playing the Rocket Synchron. You can play Herald of the Arclight, which we were playing in previous lists because if you have that Magician Souls into rotation, you can use it plus your Red Rose to end on Herald of the Arclight and protect your board a little bit more. And then in some variants of the list, you can also play cards like Triple Burst Dragon in this slot as well, or you can play Psychic End Punisher since it is nice in the Despia matchup. So this slot is a little bit flexible. You have some options for it, but right now we're playing the Dark Charmer Gloomy just because it's the most flexible option. Moving on to the side deck, not really too much to talk about. Uh, we play two token collector since Sword Soul can be a little bit of a difficult matchup. We'd be playing three, however, there's just not space in this current side deck. Uh, we're playing three Mystic Mine since obviously this card is insane. It can win a YCS, it can win us a game post-sided, but moreover, this card is just really good into our worst matchup being Despia. And if Despia goes first, they usually do not have an out to Mystic Mine, and especially they would not keep one in against a deck like Dragon Link, so you can just activate Mystic Mine and usually move on to game three from there. Then we play Dark Ruler No More for punk decks, and also just combo decks in general. This card's very good. It's a little bit better than Droplet in Dragon Link specifically, since we do not necessarily have the card economy to pitch our whole hand, but, but we can afford to just Dark Ruler our opponent and set up a board they cannot break, and it combos really well with the Borland Dragon being able to attack all of their monsters. So as long as you can get to Borland Dragon with this Dark Ruler in hand, you can break their entire field and end on a board of your own, so it's really nice. We play the three Twin Twister. We play this instead of cards like Lightning Storm, simply because there are Floodgates and other cards that are seeing play in this format, such as Anti-Spell, which Dragon Link does not appreciate too much and really needs to be able to respond to. We do play the Twin Twisters for that. We play three Evenly Matched. This card is, again, just a really insane card in this format. There's not too many decks that are fielding a ton of Omni Negates, so Evenly Matched is very nice and also hits this deck's worst matchup being Despia, being able to clear their back row, clear their Mirror Jade, and whatnot. So you're just very, very, very favored into your bad matchups when you draw this card. And finally, the one copy of Red Reboot, just to continue respecting back row decks and respecting floodgates that we sometimes cannot deal with. If I were to change anything in this side deck, I would probably change the Red Reboot to a third token collector, um, or I would change the Mystic Mines to Forbidden Droplets to further respect the Punk decks, since I think those will pick up a little bit in popularity after their recent showing at this YCS. But anyways, guys, that was the updated Dragon Link deck profile. Do let me know if you have any comments or thoughts on the deck, whether or not you liked it, whether or not you were enjoying Dragon Link this format. I think it's actually doing quite a bit better than anybody anticipated. It did top the YCS. I believe that was Faisal Khan playing the deck. 
So huge shout outs to him representing the Dragon Link strategy. But that is all I have for you guys today. So I hope you did enjoy the video. Do leave it a like if you did, and I will see you in the next one.